This is Democracy Now!, democracynow.org, The War and Peace Report. I'm Amy Goodman. And I'm Juan Gonzalez. Welcome to all of our listeners and viewers around the country and around the world. The White House has authorized the FBI to partially expand its investigation into Supreme Court nominee Brett Kavanaugh, but the agency is still being forced to wrap up its probe this week. The focus of the investigation is on allegations made by Dr. Christine Blasey Ford that Kavanaugh attempted to rape her in 1982. But the FBI has also reached out to Deborah Ramirez, a former classmate of Kavanaugh's at Yale, who says he thrust his genitals into her face during a party. While the FBI has talked to Ramirez, NBC News reports agents have not followed up on claims by their mutual friends that Kavanaugh asked them to go on the record in his defense prior to the publication of an article in The New Yorker outlining her allegations. Former Yale classmate Carrie Bertram says she tried to give the FBI text messages proving that Kavanaugh and or his friends, quote, may have initiated an anticipatory narrative as early as July in order to, quote, conceal or discredit Ramirez. NBC reports Brett Kavanaugh tried to obtain a photograph from a 1997 wedding, quote, in order to show himself smiling alongside Ramirez 10 years after they graduated, unquote. While the two did appear in the same group photo, a friend of Ramirez said she attempted to stay far away from Kavanaugh and his friends during the wedding. Kavanaugh reportedly initiated the contact with former classmates before The New Yorker published its report about Ramirez on September 23rd. This seems to contradict his testimony Thursday, when he was questioned by Republican Senator Orrin Hatch. When was the first time that the ranking member of her staff asked you about these allegations? Uh, today. When did you first hear of Ms. Ramirez's allegations against you? Uh, in the last, in the period since then, in the New Yorker story. Did the ranking member or any of her colleagues or any of their staffs ask you about Ms. Ramirez's allegations before they were leaked to the press? No. When was the first time that the ranking member or any of her colleagues or any of their staff asked you about Ms. Watch. Ramirez's allegations? Today. This comes as The Washington Post reports the slightly expanded investigation will now include a look into allegations by a third Kavanaugh accuser, Julie Swetnick, who says she observed Kavanaugh at high school parties in the 1980s, joining efforts to inebriate girls so they could be gang raped. Recently resurfaced 1983 yearbooks from Georgetown Prep show students bragging about the use of killer uh, cues uh, during Beach Week, a possible reference to quaaludes, the sedative bill. Cosby used to drug women in order to rape them. Now a group of alumni from Brett Kavanaugh's all-male private high school has issued a call for fellow graduates of Georgetown Prep to come forward if they have information about any sexual assaults possibly committed by the Supreme Court nominee, saying in a petition, quote, please do not remain silent, even if speaking out comes at some personal cost. In a minute, we'll be joined by one of those alumni. But first, I want to turn to comments of Judge Kavanaugh made about Georgetown Prep. He was speaking at Catholic University's Columbus School of Law in 2015. Fortunately, we had a, we had a good saying that we've we've held firm to to, the, uh, to this day, as the dean uh, was reminding me before uh, before the talk, which is what happens at Georgetown Prep stays at Georgetown Prep. <laughs> That's been a good thing for all of us, I think. Well, for more, we're joined by Bill Barbeau. He was a freshman at the all-male Georgetown Prep High School when Brett Kavanaugh was a senior. After Kavanaugh's testimony Thursday, Barbeau co-authored the petition calling on fellow graduates to come forward if they have any information <clears throat> about any sexual assaults possibly committed by the Supreme Court nominee. Bill Barbeau is joining us by phone from the Washington, D.C. area. Bill, welcome to Democracy Now! Can you talk about why you started this petition and how many people have signed on so far? Uh, yeah, I was—we um, were first moved to, to do this um, because we felt that it was stunning to me that we, as a community, I believe, know so much about what was going on during the 80s in, the, in perhaps party culture, um, and that there were many graduates of the class of 83 who were close to Brett but who have not 
shown their faces. They've not they've not spoken out about what was going on, either in his defense or in Dr. Ford's defense. Um, and so I, I was stunned by that silence and felt we have to try to do something to to shake my classmates and my schoolmates up and get them to think this is an opportunity for you to do the right thing. And if it if if our little petition and our drive to get them to speak um, gets even one of them to say something, then I, I feel it's been a success. And Bill Barbeau, you were a freshman uh, when uh, Brett Kavanaugh was a senior at this school. Uh, did you? Uh, how well did you know him? And when you were saw the testimony, how did that jive with your recollections of what he was like? Well, I didn't know Brett personally, and I think it's important to note that I, I don't consider myself a witness in this case in any way, shape, or form. Again, I was a freshman. He was a senior. He was a very big personality on campus. He was a. Um, a football player. He was captain of the basketball team. It was hard in a roughly 400-person school not to know who the real social leaders were, um, even as a freshman. Um, so I knew him and his crew more by reputation than personal observation. Um, however, it just struck me during his testimony that given what I know about Prep's party culture in the 80s, um, and knowing that he bragged openly on his yearbook page about his participation in that party culture, that he would rule out categorically the possibility that something untoward or downright illegal could have happened when he was under the influence of alcohol. And that just felt wrong to me. And um, I, I know that there are there must be people who are closer to him, closer in age and closer in, in social commingling, that have to know more about what was going on. And I think we've been seeing that from his Yale classmates, and I would like to see that from his prep classmates. In 1990, The Washington Post reported that headmasters from seven prestigious Washington, D.C. area private schools, including yours, Georgetown Prep and Kavanaugh's, had sent a letter to warn parents about a party culture among their children, which included heavy drinking, leading to, quote, sexual or violent behavior. The article quotes the headmaster at Holton Arms, saying, quote, a number of parents and kids have expressed dismay over some of the situations at weekend parties. We're concerned about the potential for tragedy. Bill Barbeau, can you respond to that? Um, yeah, I unfortunately wasn't familiar with that article when it was printed in, in 1990. Uh, that was when I was graduating from college. But what I read yesterday when it was first forwarded to me um, shocked me in, in some way because it was an acknowledgment on the part of the administrations of the schools that we all went to that there was a severe problem. And it was a severe problem. Um, but what is what is shocking and upsetting to me is that, as I understand it, not much institutionally has been done to really put a stop to it. And I know that there is a very, very steep hill to climb for educators in managing teenage kids. Um, I know that is, as a parent of a teenager myself, my son's 17, um, it's not easy for parents to get involved. But it, I just feel like, wow, that was a long time ago, and we're still fighting the same battle with underage drinking and drug use, with um, a, a culture, a party culture that seems to be accepting of illegal behavior and dangerous behavior. Um, and I, I just wish that there was something more that, that we could have done in the, the 28 years plus that have transpired since, um, since that letter came out. Now, you have uh, close to 70 names on this letter that you, you issued. What do you hope to do with, with it? And what are you uh, hope are all the people who've signed the petition uh, willing to go uh, public with their names? Or? Well, it's, it's closer to 100 now. I actually didn't look at the number this morning. I should have. It's, it's been growing since um, we released it on Saturday, which um, is probably a tricky day to try to get people to pay attention to it. But since we've started to get some news coverage on it, um, we've been getting more and more signatories. Um, and we've been very judicious with uh, how we're going to proceed, because there are a number of folks who signed who, for various reasons, such as they're employed by the federal government, can't have their names released publicly, um, but did they did sign it in that they wanted to indicate support. So we're having to be very thoughtful, and we're contacting everyone individually to make sure that they are aware that we intend to go public with their name, make sure that they are who they say they are, and that we didn't end up with some false entries. Um, but th the concern that I have right now 
is that I'm not all that sure how interested the FBI is in our list. Um, they have their hands full. And that's what is so uh, urgent about this situation to me is a week is not very much time for the FBI to conduct a very thorough in investigation. Um, they have to identify, locate, and interview a lot of people if they really want to get to the bottom of this. Um, so they may have their hands full, which leads me to believe that the press um, may be a, a more uh, effective way to get the word out and to get our letter to see the light of day and for then fellow prep alumni to take the action of saying, you know what, I do have a story and I do think it's important that it be heard. Hmm. Um, Bill Barbeau, you said in an interview with The Washingtonian, consent as a concept did not even exist. It was not in our lexicon at Georgetown Prep. Explain. Well, I feel culturally it's important to recognize that the 80s were a very different time and place for the country at large, um, not just in, in private schools, private all-boys schools. Um, everywhere, we weren't talking a whole lot about the sexual dynamic between boys and girls at the high school level. It just wasn't part of the conversation. When you compound that by having an all-boys private school that's Catholic, um, the likelihood of meaningful conversations between administrators, between parents and kids, um, coming up to try to recognize the fact that there are thousands of shades of grays between the gentlemanly conduct, which was which was the the shorthand at the time to tell us how we were supposed to behave around girls, um, and and down and out rape. Um, there's so much nuance in there, and it's a lot to cover. And there needed to be, in retrospect, hindsight is always twenty twenty a more concerted effort on the parts of parents, administrators, the school itself to, to lock horns with the fact that good kids do do bad things, um, especially when alcohol is involved. Mm. And I think it's easy to criticize them now through the lens of 2018. Um, but but it, I, just, just to be very honest about the milieu in which we were operating at that time, we weren't talking about the subtleties of sexual dynamics. We were barely talking about the mechanics of sexuality. I learned most of what I knew about sexuality from my middle school health and sex education class, not from conversations that I was having in high school about how you know when it's okay to have sex and how you know when and how to stop yourself when it's not okay. Oh, uh, Brett Kavanaugh's senior yearbook page refers to him as, uh, quote, Keg City Club treasurer, 100 kegs or bust, and says he was the, quote, biggest contributor to the Beach Week Ralph Club, as, as well as a reference to the Renati uh, alumnius. Uh, could you talk about these references that you saw in the yearbook and what they, what they would mean to you as someone well, who was part of the school, uh, a part of that school? Sure. Um, as with many private schools that have a whole— page dedicated to each kid, it is a place for you to commemorate your time at school. It's, it's your way of, of writing, your thing, writing your name in the wet cement so that you're, for all eternity, um, locked down. It's a way to commemorate inside jokes that you have with your friends um, and, and just to basically have a laugh, because we didn't have Instagram or Facebook then, so you couldn't go back and, and take a look at the old photos any, by any other means besides looking at your yearbook. So collectively, we all made up a lot of stuff. Um, some of it could have been exaggerated. Some of it could have been entirely faked. Um, but what I saw in, on Brett's page was a, a championing of the drinking culture. Um, and, and you don't, if you're an innocent choir boy who occasionally likes to have a beer, um, call yourself the, the, captain of Keg City or whatever it was that he said. Um, these, these are things that just don't sit right with me and struck me as very much at odds with um, how he portrayed himself in his interview on Fox and how he portrayed himself um, in front of the Senate on Thursday. Mm. Bill Barbeau, the editors of America Magazine, the National Weekly, published the Jesuits of the United published by the Jesuits of the United States, called for Kavanaugh's nomination to be withdrawn. Your school, Georgetown Prep, where Kavanaugh was a student when he allegedly assaulted uh, Christine Blasey, is a Jesuit high school. Can you talk about what that meant to you when the Jesuits came out against Kavanaugh? 
Uh, I felt it was a very powerful statement. I think that there are a lot of folks who are probably listening to me speak right now who are saying, why are you doing this? Why are you trying to take down your school? I'm not trying to take down my school. From my perspective, I'm trying to stand up for my school. I'm trying to stand up for all the good men who have gone through that school. I'm trying to stand up for what I believe were the values that were instilled in us as students there of truth, of honesty, of integrity. Um, And so I felt vindicated in a way um, by the Jesuits choosing to withdraw their nomination because I think they recognized, as do I, that in Brett we have, like all of us, a, a flawed human being. But he's not acknowledging those flaws and he's not embracing the fact that we all have pasts, we all have the ability and capacity to make mistakes, but you atone for them, you lock horns with them, you acknowledge them, you realize that you could have caused pain for another human being, you don't run away from it, you don't hide behind um, verbal gymnastics as he was doing on Thursday. And I, I felt proud that that the Jesuits chose to recognize that and and realize that um, we we as a community of 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 students and and coming from that 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 history and that legacy can do better and should do better. And Bill Barbeau, you've uh, you've gone out publicly with this petition. You're, you've done interviews, uh, but you're declining to be uh, to be uh, on air or seen publicly. Could you talk about why? Well, Dr. Ford has received death threats, um, and she's she is obviously the key person in all of this. So I don't like to overstate that I'm somehow on equal importance as she is, but I am very concerned that this battle for for Judge Kavanaugh's nomination um, is seen by many in the community as a proxy battle for other um, l- larger wars, such as um, the, the war against Roe v. Wade. Um, and there are obviously numerous historical precedents for violence being done to those who are willing to speak out against these things. Um, I'm a parent of, of three kids. I've got a teenager and two small children. I've got a wife who I love dearly and putting them in danger simply because um, my face needs to be seen on television just doesn't seem wise. And I'd really rather my voice carry um, the message that we're trying to to get across. Hmm. Now, Neil Gorsuch was also a student at Georgetown Prep. Is that right, Bill? Between you and, uh, and Brett Kavanaugh? Kavanaugh Sr., you a freshman. Was Gorsuch a year above you? Yes, he was a sophomore when I was a freshman. Any comments? Um, when, when Neil was first nominated and then um, put onto the court, I, I accepted it as a pretty uh, vanilla nomination on the part of the president. He wants to pack the court with reliable conservatives. And for as long as I've known Neil, he was he was a conservative. He he made no bones about that when he was in high school. Um, I think that the the process through which Neil was nominated and the words that he used to describe his past and his experience are very different from how Brett has been acting and what he's been saying. And um, I, I'm I'm no fan of of. Niels. Um, I, I really would love to see a much more progressive Supreme Court personally, but I accept the fact that we didn't win the election and it's the prerogative of the president to nominate whoever he wants. Um, but what I do want to see is someone of the deepest and most unimpeachable character and integrity on the court. And I feel that Neil can embody that, even if his politics differ from mine, in ways that I have very big concerns about Brett's. Well, we want to thank you for being with us, Bill Barbeau, freshman at the all-male Georgetown Prep High School when Brett Kavanaugh was a senior. After Kavanaugh testified Thursday, uh, Bill Barbeau co-authored a petition now of over 100 names calling on fellow graduates to come forward if they have information about any sexual assaults possibly committed by the Supreme Court nominee. This is Democracy Now! When we come back, the ACLU rarely takes a position on a Supreme Court nominee. When Brett Kavanaugh was first nominated, they wouldn't take a position. We had them on, and they were clear. They've changed their minds. Stay with us.